Praise the Lord. Thank you for tuning in this uh, video that you're watching. We'll come to you tonight at this revival. It's Friday night, September 28th, 2018, when this sermon is recorded. So we welcome you to the message. And this message is coming to you from the southwest part of the USA in a city called Gallup, New Mexico. And we welcome you. It's a privilege to bring you the word. Whoever you are on this planet, wherever you are, we know there are multitudes of you are listening. Thank you for tuning in. So we start with this um, verse, John 8, 32. The Bible says, the everlasting living word, the Bible says, and you shall know the truth. The truth. Jesus Christ is the truth. Amen. John 14, 6. The word of God is the truth. John 17, verse 17. The Holy Spirit which comes through the cross is the truth. 1 John <coughs> chapter 5. I believe it was verse 6. There, you look it up, it's easy to find. First John chapter 5. So here it says, and you shall know the truth. That means you have to study the truth. You got to have that uh, knowledge to know the truth. Get the knowledge, get into the knowledge, start studying the truth, know what the truth is, who the truth is. And then it says, and the truth shall make you free. It's a slow process. Hallelujah. It's going to be a slow process. When you know the truth, when you start to know the truth, and when you are in the truth, you will be changed. You will be made free. Free from all the clinging vines of the fall of Adam. The sin that is in the world, you'll be set free. You'll be made free. Gradual process. That's what we're going to start with tonight. And we go to John 3.16. <clears throat> the Bible says there, For God so loved the world, that he gave his only begotten son. That whosoever, that's you, the listener, believes. We got to have faith. We got to use faith. Faith in Jesus Christ and him crucified. That's what it means to believe God. Whosoever believes in him, in Jesus, should not perish. So Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. When you believe in him, you will not perish. You're not going to pass away like the, all the unredeemed, but have everlasting life. That's a, a great gospel. This is a great scripture that God says, that God spoke in his Bible. For God so loved the world, so he loves you. Whosoever you are, it don't matter how we come against sin in this world. Like we said last night, there's some things that we have said, something about the evilness that the people do, that, that are doing at this moment, today, the sin that is so horrible against God. No matter the sin God hates, but you, you, a human being, you, the created being of God. You are created by God. He loves you. The Bible says so. 
The Bible says He loves you so much. You have to come to Him. You have to come to Him to get out of that mess. To get out of that sin. That's the reason for the coming of Christ into this world. God becoming man for a purpose. For one reason. And that's to pay the penalty price of our sin of this world. And that he did. He done it. It's a done deal long ago. Nearly 2,000 years ago. It's done. It's done. He is the way right now. He is the truth. He is the life. You go into Him. You accept Him. Really accept Him into your heart. That's the way you get saved. That's the way you start to walk with God. You are made a friend of God again. All because of what Jesus has done. God gave Him up to the cross. And the cross is a finished work that whosoever believes Jesus Christ and His atonement work, they shall never perish but have everlasting life that's what the bible says and then we go a page over john chapter 4 verse 13. <clears throat> the lord is speaking to that woman at the well at that jacob's well a samaritan woman jesus is talking to her and said unto her whosoever drinks of this water talking about jacob's well shall thirst again the worldly the physical water and then he said but whosoever drinks of the water that i shall give him shall never thirst Hallelujah. and this is the spiritual water but the water that I shall give him shall be in him a well of water springing up into everlasting life. Jesus is life. You take Jesus, invite Jesus into your heart, and he is life. He's going to make you live forever, forever, forever. You're not going into destruction. You're going to live you're going to live forever. You're going to live forever. Jesus is the way. Jesus is the way. The only way to God. The only way to heaven. The only way to eternal life. And that's the answer for our problems, people. So the, this is the simplicity of faith. It is so simple. You believe. You only believe. The reason we have the sin is that you learn about it in the first page of the Bible. So we go there, Genesis chapter 2. Start with the creation of man. Chapter 2, verse 7. And the Lord God formed man of the dust of the ground. Do you know you are made out of clay? You that are boasting, you that are so high-minded, you are formed out of a clay. The dust of the ground, he says. And God breathed into his nostrils. Okay, again, read it all over. And the Lord God formed man of the dust of the ground. That must have been a hard work. God forming a man out of the dust, out of clay. And he breathed into his nostrils the breath of life. The breath of life. So therefore, that breath that he breathed into the man, he became a living soul, says the Bible. And you read uh, Daniel chapter 5, verse 23. It says there, Our breath, our breathing, is in God's hands. Because of Him, you breathe in. Every breath you take in, that's the gift from God. That's the breath from God. That breath became 
the living soul. We were wonderfully made in the beginning. So God wants to take us back to the way we were created in the future. He's working on it. He has agenda to bring the human race back to the way he wanted them to be perfect, clean, and holy. Again, it's up in the future. He's going to fix the human race back to the way they were supposed to be holy and in tune with God, Amen. walking with God again. So, and then we got messed up. <coughs> uh, verse 21, <coughs> that's chapter 2, verse 21. Uh, here, uh, Adam, first, he was the only one there with the animals. And then, God gave him the helper, the helpmate, the woman. And the Lord God caused a deep sleep to fall upon Adam, and he slept, and he took one of his ribs, so the woman is made out of the body that is already created by God, which is Adam. So he took the ribs out of Adam and closed up the flesh instead thereof a surgery type. And the rib which the Lord God had taken from man made he a woman and brought her unto the man. So the woman was made out of Adam. The first man. So that was a perfect environment with the couple there. Then Satan came along, chapter 3. Let's start reading verse 6. And here uh, the woman was talking with Satan. Satan was talking through the snake, the serpent. And then um, she was deceived by Satan. So here she is looking at a tree that was forbidden for the couple, Adam and Eve, not to eat out of that tree. And when the woman saw that the tree was good for food, this presents the loss of the eyes. It's a sin what she was doing, and that it was pleasant to the eyes. The loss of the flesh was introduced there. And the snake being used by Satan was probably dancing at that time. Because it's more obvious this, the serpent wasn't crawling at that time. Probably it used to walk and it had some limited speaking ability. This why this lady, the first woman, she wasn't surprised to be having a communication with the snake. So and the tree to be desired to make one wise, pride of life. And she took the fruit thereof and did eat. And that constitutes the fall. The woman fell first and gave also unto her husband, which is Adam, with her, and he did eat. They messed up. They fell. Adam fell because of unbelief. Unbelief. He didn't believe the word of God anymore. He forsook the word of God and there it is. That's where our trouble on this planet come into existence. It's sin. It's a horrible sin. And the eyes of both them were open. And they knew that they were naked. Naked to the judgment of God. And they sewed fig leaves together and made themselves aprons. And they heard the voice of the Lord God walking in the garden in the cool of the day. 
And Adam and his wife hid themselves from the presence of the Lord God all among the trees of the garden. So they started to hide. And this is what's going on today. This is the reason people do not want to come to God. They want to hide from God. That's the sin of Adam and Eve. The, the sin started there. And we are afraid of God ever since that time. And the Lord God called unto Adam and said unto him, Where are you? And he said, Adam said, I heard your voice in the garden, and I was afraid. The one he used to have communication with, the one that was the best friend of them couple, the sin came into them, and then they were afraid. Sin causes problems. Sin is our problem in this world. And the solution, what we just said a while ago, Jesus Christ. John 3, 16, Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ is the solution. So we will not be afraid of God anymore. We will not be hiding from God anymore. And they said, Adam said, because I was naked and I hid myself. Ever since that time, we've been hiding from God. We've been running from God. That's why it's so hard to bring people in to come into the kingdom of God. They're hiding from God. They don't want to hear about God. They don't want to hear about the Bible. They don't want to, name, the name, to hear the name of Jesus Christ. Because I was naked, that's a, that's a spiritual way. That means... Judgment was on him. Judgment came on him. And judgment is on the human race. Judgment. To get out of that judgment, the solution is Jesus Christ. Come on. The Lord Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. So that's the trouble. The trouble started there. And then uh, uh, the... It causes terrible sin, shame in this world. What happened with Adam and Eve? They disobeyed God. That was the reason. Not so much about eating what kind of fruit they ate. It is disobedience to the word of God. And that's what we have. Disobedience against God is soul disease that we have in this world. So that sin, that soul disease give us shame, poverty, hunger, war, hatred, on and on and on with the sin of the human race. And they are lost sons of Adam's race. That's what we are in this world. So the solution, Jesus Christ. What we read, John 3, 16. Now we go to uh, the, the Second Corinthians 5, 17. Second Corinthians 5, 17. Jesus can change you. Amen. He is the solution. Hallelujah. He is the answer. So simple. It's the solution. Uh, what could we call the simplicity of faith? That's the subject today. Are you there? Are you there? Yeah. Second Corinthians five seventeen. When the person is saved, therefore, afterward, therefore, from there on, if any man be in Christ, Hallelujah, he is a new creature, creation, new creation, Hallelujah. We are changed. When you are changed, you know, you know, you know you have been changed. You have been a sinner. You might have been a hardcore sinner. <laughs> You'll know those sin desires, the evil desires are not there no more. You are changed. You are changed. You are changed. You are changed. You are changed from your sins. 
You don't have any more de desires for sins. That's great. Amen. That's peace. Hallelujah. That's the love of God. The That's the wonderful, wonderful, wonderful love of God. Amen. God loves the people. We preach so hard against sin, but that's only the sin we're preaching against. We don't have hatred for people. Amen. God loves the people. Amen. God loves you. Listener, God loves you so much that he paid the price for you. He made a way for you to make it to safety forever, to live forever, to have that everlasting life. Therefore, if any man be in Christ, get saved, get into the blood of Jesus, get into the way of God, he is a new creature, a new creation. All things are passed. Notice it says, things. All things are passed away. All things are passed away. In your life, in your heart. And then, everything that you had to do with surrounding you, your home, everything, your work, whatever you're living with, whatever you had to do with, all things are changed for the better. All things start to get blessed. You used to have poverty, not anymore. When you're in Christ, you are blessed. You are blessed because of that faith. You have that faith. You're exercising that faith. Jesus Christ and His atoning work, you're going to be blessed. All things are passed away. All things, I mean. All things are passed away. Behold, all things become new. Everything becomes new. Within you, around you, surrounding you, everything. It says all things right there. Hallelujah. That's the solution. Jesus Christ is your answer. Okay, look what happened. Uh, Luke 18, Sean. With this uh, blind man, what's his name? Bartimaeus, the name. <laughs> Son of Timaeus. <laughs> Luke 18. Look, 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 look what happened there. So. We read, verse 35, And it came to pass that as he was come near unto Jericho, he was going through Jericho. The other account, Matthew 20 and Mark 10, Mark, Matthew chapter 20, Mark 10, stated there. One says as he was leaving, it, there's no contradiction. He came there and he left, okay? And it came to pass that as Jesus was come, as he was come near unto Jericho, a certain blind man sat by the wayside, begging. Wayside would be the main road, the main highway. People travel. So many people travel that road, and they lead him there, obviously. Someone has to help him, lead him there to the main road, main street, whatever you would call it. And he would sit there. He would spread his beggar's coat there so that people will drop their coins, their money there. If they have pity on him, that is. Certain blind men sat by the wayside begging. That's the, the way we are. We're beggars when we don't have Jesus. <laughs> and hearing the multitude pass by, there was a great thousands of people, great number of people there going by. And there was a great noise. Hearing the multitude pass by, he asked what it meant. He asked somebody. He's probably hollering. He don't see. Remember? He doesn't see people. So, uh, hey, somebody, somebody, what does this mean? He, he probably said it loud. He asked what it meant. And they told him. Someone told him came by to him and said, Jesus of Nazareth is passing by. So this beggar knew what, who Jesus of Nazareth was because the way he responded, the way he said, the way he asked for help is all there. And that's the right way to ask Jesus. The right way is with the cross. 
This guy knew this uh, Messiah that was to come. He knew. He knew who this Jesus is by listening to people, someone instructing him in a synagogue somewhere that we, he used to go there for church. So he learned about this Messiah that he's been hearing, all the miracles, the, the raising of the dead, the, the lepers are being healed, and people are being healed, and people are blessed. He heard, and he heard, and he heard. He probably prayed that Jesus will one day come by, and it's obvious his prayers got answered that day, that very day, that morning. He probably was just thinking this is another day this is an another boring i don't see anything boring day this is another terrible thing in my life i have to beg someone has to give me some money i have to beg and beg and this is another day uh, trouble 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 thoughts trouble mind and all the depressive minds coming into his mind and it, what he was thinking and as he was being led to the road and he sat down there and, uh, and all the pity party there along the road. <laughs> then this great news came around. Jesus of Nazareth is going by. Jesus of Nazareth. That perked him up. This is a, in his mind, I cannot lose this chance. This is my opportunity. This was my prayer that one day he would come. That obviously was the case. Because he said, he cried, he yelled, he shouted, saying, Jesus, thou son of David. And that's the right way to approach God. You approach God on the premise of the shed blood. So the son of David, that implies that this is the Messiah. So he addressed God exactly the way it should be done. To ask of God, Jesus, the son of David. Today we say, through the cross. Amen. Through your shed blood. Through your finished atoning work. Long ago. Long ago. That's, that's how we address God, okay? This is exactly the similar way, okay? Jesus, thou son of David, have mercy on me. That mercy is Jesus. Amen. That mercy is the cross. Amen. That mercy is the shed blood. Amen. Remember, in the Old Testament, they used to apply on that uh, the Ark of the Covenant, they applied the blood of the Lamb. Mercy seat, it's called. So Jesus is mercy. Have mercy on me. He got it the right way. Because he had that knowledge about the Messiah. The coming Messiah, which is Jesus. And they which went before rebuke him. People don't understand you when you start to have faith. When you start to have the right faith. People will not understand. Will not clearly understand. Or absolutely don't understand you. They said to him that he should hold his peace. They told him to shut up. Old man or you blind man or whatever. But he cried so much the more. He didn't mind the, the unbelievers. The, <laughs> the people that told him to shut up. He, he just yelled the more. Thou son of David have mercy on me. And verse 40 and Jesus stood <laughs> you want to stop God ask him the right way let this blind man like the way he cried out to God through the cross of Christ Jesus stood God stood the angel stood heaven stood for this blind man, poor man, Bartimaeus, son of Timaeus, and commanded, Jesus commanded him to be brought unto him. Hallelujah. Told some people, bring him. Bring him. Amen. And when he was come near, he asked him, Jesus asked him, saying, what will you that I shall do Unto you, what a great question. Here's that question for you. You have a problem? 
You think you have a mountain of problem? Talk to him. Talk to Jesus one on one. Never mind all these religiosities around you. Go to Jesus. Go to Jesus. Go to Jesus. Go to Jesus. Have a talk with Jesus. Have a talk with Jesus. Go to Jesus one on one. The question was posed to him, a, a shocking question, obviously, to that man. And he said, very humbly, obviously, Lord. Amen. He got saved. Hallelujah. Jesus spoke to him. He got saved. Hallelujah. When the Bible implies the, the address like that, like a person says, Lord. That means they're safe. When you are saved, that's exactly what you said, huh? Amen. Lord, you are my Lord Amen. from here on. Amen. Satan is not my Lord anymore. But you, Jesus, you are my Lord. He said, Lord, that I may receive my sight. Sinner friend, ask the Lord to take off the blindness off of you. Blindness in your heart. Blindness in your soul. Ask the Lord to take off the blindness off of you and say to him, Lord, that I may receive my sight in my heart. Amen. And Jesus said unto him, he didn't ask the question, who are you? Why did you become blind? Have you done so, some horrible thing that made you to go blind? Sin does make people blind. He didn't ask such questions. <laughs> he just told him, receive your sight. Your faith, there it is. Your faith has saved you. No ritual. He didn't ask, were you baptized? <laughs> Did you join the church membership? Nope. Your faith, individual faith out of a person, that matters. Your faith, your faith, your faith, it has to be personal. It has to be really personal. Your faith has saved you. Your faith will save you. Your faith will save you. At Cornelius' house, the Gentile house, Peter, the Jew, was preaching the first time to the Gentiles. The gospel was there, being taught to the Gentiles. And while they were listening, the Bible says they got saved. The Bible says they got baptized in the Holy Spirit. They started to speak in a new language. So when you are saved, instantly, at times, instantly, right at the moment, a few seconds after you get saved, He will baptize you if you are really hungry for God. So that's what happened at Cornelius, uh, the household there. Long ago, the Italians, they received the salvation Moments later, they got baptized in the Holy Spirit. Later, they were baptized in water. <laughs> Receive your sight. Your faith has saved you. And immediately, he received his sight. What a joy that must have been. He must have jumped up. He must have been leaping around. He must have been yelling. Glory to God. Glory to God. Because that's what he said right there. He received his sight and followed Jesus. Followed him. Glorifying God. All the way to Jerusalem. The last uh, trip to Jerusalem before the crucifixion. That's what the story is about. And he was glorifying God. Hopping around. Leaping and dancing and shouting and telling others. Look at me. Look at me. Some of you know me. I'm Bartimaeus. The son of Timaeus. You know me. Look at, look at my eyes. I can see Jesus came gave me my sight. Jesus gave me my sight. Jesus. He was worshiping, glorifying God, it says. And all the people, when they saw it, they were shouting with him. 
give praise unto God. They were shouting, they were dancing, they were having Pentecostal shout all along the way as they follow Jesus. Hallelujah. So when we get healed, we should shout. We should give God the glory. In the middle of the night or whenever the daytime, shout. Or just praise Him. Simply praise Him. Give Him thanks. Give Him thanks for what good things He has done to you. All right, that's Bartimaeus. He started to follow Jesus. And uh, uh, this man, he, according to Jewish tradition, he was a stout believer in the early church. He was one of the pillars. He was there for the people. This blind, former, former blind man, Bartimaeus. That's what tradition says. All right. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Go to, uh, uh, we're going to end it up here. Uh, Colossians 2. Colossians chapter 2, verse 11. In whom, in Jesus, also you are circumcised. This is what God does to you. With the circumcision made without hands. Meaning, this is a spiritual matter. In the heart. In putting off the body of the sins of the flesh. The sins of the world. What Adam gave us, what we were born with, it be put off. Hallelujah. <laughs> Jesus Hallelujah. is your solution. Hallelujah. <laughs> Putting off the body of the sins of the flesh, but the circumcision of Christ, spiritual circumcision, in the heart, in the spirit. Hallelujah. Buried with him in baptism, meaning you're in him. You're buried with him. You're risen with him. Therefore, you're born again. From there on, you walk in that resurrection life. You are changed. You are changed. You are made ready for heaven. So keep on going. Keep that resurrection life all the days of your life. That's good. Bear it with him in baptism. Spiritual baptism, that is. Wherein also you are risen with him. Yes. Through the faith, the faith, the faith of the operation of God. That's how God operates. Through that faith, God looks to Calvary. Where it all happened. Where it, uh, the, the ultimate payment was done long ago. God still looks there at what His Son Jesus Christ has done for the human race. And we ought to look there too. Look there. Look what he has done for us spiritually, spiritually, in our spirit. Start to believe Jesus and his atoning work at that cross long ago. Through faith of the operation of God. That's how God operates. No other way. Amen. Not by church rituals. Church rituals are man-made. Who has raised him from the dead? That's what you believe. Jesus Christ was crucified. Jesus Christ was put in the tomb. Jesus Christ rose from the dead on the third day. Jesus Christ lives forever. He will never die again. He lives forever. And you go into Him. He comes into you. You start to have the never dying life. You become the never dying one. The old great grandpa on the Navajo land. They preach. That means never dying ones. Amen. Never dying ones. Jesus makes you the never dying one. You're going to live. It doesn't matter they put you in the grave for a while. You're going to rise up when, they, when Jesus comes. When the trump of God sounds. You're going to be raised up. And you'll be given a new body, a resurrected body. And that body that is given to you, you're going to live in that body forever, forever, forever. That's the faith of the operation of God. Who has raised him from the dead. There it is. That's that faith. You believe Jesus rose from the dead and he lives forevermore. 
and being and you being dead in your sins was those that are not in Jesus those that are not uh, they haven't accepted Jesus Christ into their hearts they're dead uh, spiritually you being dead in your sins and the uncircumcision of your flesh all the debaucheries of the flesh has he quickened together with him has he quickened make you alive Amen. with him born again with him with Jesus having forgiven you all trespasses it's a great experience to get your sins forgiven no matter what a sinner you are what a horrible sinner you have been he will forgive you all 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 of your trespasses and then he defeated the devil verse 14 blood and out the handwriting of obed uh, ordinance that was against us the, the 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 old way jesus fulfilled all the commandments of god so so we are under grace yes. Amen. And, and then with that grace we ought to live a holy life Praise which God. was contrary to us the way thou shalt not thou shalt not thou shalt not doesn't work no more because jesus came and he fulfilled the law of god Amen. for us Amen. for us for us so there's that liberty in jesus he'll make you free and look and took it out of the way the penalty of the law being removed <laughs> nailing it to his cross the law with its decrees was abolished in christ's death with his with him crucified all this what was the law done away with so we're under grace 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 the goodness of god they all get grace the goodness of god grace and then having spoiled there it is at the cross satan was defeated forever he had a knockout he fell he fell jesus knocked him out the greatest knockout in the whole world and having spoiled principalities that Satan and all his demon hordes and all his darkness kingdom that's what it is principality and heaven spoil principalities and powers power of Satan Satan's power they were all defeated he Jesus made a show of them openly Amen. like a boxing match and this this ugly lizard this ugly dragon got knocked out for all of eternity Amen. triumphing Amen. over them in it it is the cross <laughs> triumphing over them over all the darkness world in the cross that's what it means hallelujah 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 Hallelujah. Glory to God. Satan is defeated. Yes. Satan is only a created angel. And, and he is evil one. He was righteous, holy one time. Where in the eternity past, he became evil because he is sin. And he gave us sin in this world. Okay, Luke 9, 23. That's how you carry the cross. Luke 9 23. Great scripture there. Luke 9 23. Luke 9 23. All right. Luke 9 23. Get it? Amen. Glory. And he said, Jesus said to them all, that includes me and you and the whole human race. If any man, there's that condition, if, the word if, if any man will come after me to go follow Jesus. Let him deny himself. Deny the things of this world. Deny our own strength. Deny our own abilities. Deny our own self-will. Deny our uh, whatever we depended on in this world. Deny, shove them aside. Take up your cross. Take up his cross. Meaning, stop believing. 
That's it. That's the simplicity of faith in Jesus Christ. Take up his cross. Believe. Today, believe. 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 Daily. Every day. Constantly. And follow me. That's how you follow Jesus. And you have victory in his cross. You have victory in the blood of Jesus. All the time. All the time. All the time. A Philippian jailer once said, Acts 16, verse 30, and so forth, What must I do to be saved? Paul said, Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, and thou shalt be saved, and your family shall be saved. And, uh, paraphrasing those words there, you read it yourself. Glory be to God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Glory, hallelujah. So that's uh, the message for tonight. And Glory, glory, hallelujah. Since I laid my burdens down. Glory, glory, hallelujah. Since I laid my burdens down. I am feeling so much better since I laid my burden down. Yes, I'm feeling so much better since I laid my burden down. And it's glory, glory, hallelujah since I laid my burden Yes, I'm feeling just like shouting since I laid my burdens down. Glory, glory, hallelujah, since I laid my burdens down. Glory, glory, hallelujah, since I Since I laid my burdens down, yes, I'm feeling just like saying, since I laid my burdens down, glory, glory, hallelujah, since I laid my burdens down, I am feeling just like shouting since I lay my burden down. Yes, I'm feeling just like shouting since I lay my burden down. Glory, glory, hallelujah. Since I lay my burden down. Glory, glory. Since I lay my burdens down, 